All statements and opinions expressed by guests of the Adult in the Room podcast are strictly their own and do not necessarily reflect the beliefs or opinions of the host, producers, or advertisers. All interviews are presented in their most complete possible form in the interests of free speech. No statements should be interpreted as financial, legal, or medical advice. Listener and viewer discretion are strongly advised. It's the Adult in the Room podcast with Victoria Taft. That's me. You know, in the world of political puzzlers, Americans of all political stripes, everybody shares the same questions. Now, what's whether they say them out loud or just keep them to themselves. So why on earth, they ask, would we leave Afghanistan like a bunch of teenagers trying to hide the rager they had when their parents were away. And then instead of cleaning up the mess, they do a dipsy doodle. And then what happens is the kids abandon the whole house with all the food and mom's jewelry and, and all the money and the safe all left there. And uh, then they shrug their shoulders. Mom and dad come back and go, what happened here? Um, oh, well, somebody else took over the house. And oh, by the way, they have guns. I mean, the way they had Anna, Afghanistan, that Afghanistan bug out was conducted, I mean, it never made any sense. There's some, so many things that happen in the news that just don't make sense, right? And you're not, you're not wrong to question all of this. You're exactly spot on. You should be questioning this. Here's another one, another puzzler out of the front page. Why would we pay hundreds of millions of dollars to the Iranians not to build nukes when we know they were making nukes and the centrifuges were already spinning? And then then, then we pay them more uh, for ransom for people they kidnapped. And now that's the low end price, the base price for all future American uh, kidnappees, victims. I mean, it doesn't make sense, right? You think, well, you know, the, the mullahs aren't our friends. Why are we paying them millions of dollars and sort of laundering them through this ransom stuff? What What is going on? You're not dumb to ask the question. When it doesn't make sense, that's when you should start asking questions. And it's always the question is, who benefits? That's question number one. And then the next question is, why would anyone who loves our country do that? Now, that is should not be a political question. You are right to question these events. How about this? Ukraine war just sort of comes out of nowhere at one point, and then we're all in. And spending more money on the Ukraine war in a couple of years than we did the entire country of Afghanistan for a 20-year period of time. It's going to be that. It's going to be that amount of money in, in very short order. It's crazy. It's nuts. So another puzzler. This one's asked by a lot of people. Why did the borders just open when Joe Biden became president. Why were they just opened? And five to seven million people come in. Why did that happen? It doesn't make sense. Why would somebody who wants to secure our nation do that to the United States? If you want to fix immigration, you know, they'll say, oh, it's because of comprehensive immigration reform. It's all the Republicans' fault. Come on. You're not that dumb, right? If you want to fix immigration, then don't you increase the number of people you allow legally into the country every year beyond the 1 million people we already allow? Why all that chaos? Why create the chaos? That's intentional. Why though? Why? We have environmental degradation at the border. Have you seen the, the photos? Oh my word, they're terrible. The stories of human trafficking, women and girls, boys too, being trafficked in order to pay off the costs that they have to pay to the cartels. Fentanyl killing as many Americans per year as in periods of wartime with a hot war. This is absurd. It's not crazy to ask why. It's not crazy to ask, what, what's going on here, really? So Mike McCormick, the former transcriptionist for former Vice President Joe Biden, has some thoughts on some of these issues because he, during his period of time with Vice President Biden, followed him around the world and took down every single word he said. And he deals with all of these words and what they mean now in his substack called Midnight in the Laptop 
of good and evil. And he's recently been seen on the Fox Nation documentary, Who is Hunter Biden? And will soon be seen in another documentary called Broken Anthem. He is the author of two books, Joe Biden Unauthorized, and the other book, 2020 Crack Up of the Democratic Party. He has taken the Hunter Biden laptop and he has cross-referenced this information with his own experience and transcriptions of Joe Biden. And he has found evidence of crimes. And we've had him on before, but I welcome Mike McCormick back to the Adult in the Room podcast. Mike, thanks so much for coming back. Thanks, Ren. Oh. How are you? You've been keeping an eye on a lot of things, not the least of which is the cartel connection with the Biden family, right. which, which may explain some of this stuff, but... What do you prefer to do? You want to bring us up to date on the Hunter Biden, the the laws broken by Hunter Biden and Joe Biden and uh, how you found those out and gave evidence? Or do you want to do the cartels first? Which yeah, do you prefer? Let's go first with, you know, Hunter and Joe. There's a lot in there right now about, uh, you know, the pseudonyms, right? He's pseudonyms. So I'm working on a sub stack right now about um, a pseudonym. One of the pseudonyms he used was uh, Robin Ware four five six. That's a, that's his email his pseudonym email address. Robin Ware four five six at gmail dot com. And what I did was uh, about a while a long while ago. I had the Substack. I'm, I, I had the Substack up and running since the fall of twenty twenty one. That's when I got uh, a copy of the Hunter Biden laptop from uh, the good folks at Marco Polo. There are the um, anti-corruption nonprofit, and they're running rings around the Hunter Biden uh, legal defense uh, crew. I mean, I, I think Marco Polo had a big hand in having that whole thing that you know uh, their plea deal tip over and dissolve, and it's now in chaos. And so they're trying to back off and have this guy Weiss, you know, be the special counsel as kind of the stifling force on the whole thing. So Marco Polo's had a big behind the scenes impact on them, and they have put out their uh, report on the Hunter Biden laptop. It has tons of crimes in there. So he gave me the laptop, and I started looking through it. Now where we are with what this is is, I've gone on national television. I've done this Fox thing, uh, the Fox Nation um, documentary. Joe Biden is a criminal. That's what I say, and I have the evidence in my Substack. So one of the things that um, I've talked about, I don't know if we talked about it last time we were here, but um, he used to have this pseudonym, Robin Ware 456 at uh, Robin Ware at 456, 456 at gmail.com. So I did a search through the laptop of that. And there was one, and what I do is I know what was happening in the time frames. I know the time frames. So I saw this this time frame around April 2014, around a trip that we took to Ukraine. And I was like, huh. And I started looking at the Robin uh, Ware emails. And there was one that kicked back, but it was a funny one because it turns out Hunter sent an email to his dad, Jill, uh, his brother, Bo, his brother, Bo's wife, Hallie, uh, before he had an affair with her, and um, his sister, and that's the reason to kick back because he has an email address for a sister wrong. Well, everybody else got the email. And what it was was a basketball tournament that was held in Wilmington. This is a week before Joe Biden goes over to Ukraine. He's just publicly announced that he's going to be in Ukraine. And his granddaughter is in a basketball tournament six miles from his house. Hunter Biden, I've done, e I've done substacks on this. I've talked to the Secret Service. I've called the people on the um, basketball team that were there. They're still the same people. Was Hunter in Wilmington? Never heard back. The the uh, No comment from the Secret Service. Never heard back from the basketball team. But Hunter Biden has, there's loads of travel uh, logs from the Secret Service about where Hunter was just before this day and just after this day. And But then on, on this day, April 12, 2014, there's nothing. Well, that night, April 12th, 2014, he wrote a 22-point email to Devin Archer, very detailed, very strategic about what they're going to do with Burisma. And he talks in it several points in there about my guy, 
let's not get expe- expectations too high for my guy. Well, he's talking about Joe. He also talks about our guy has to do this. That's the guy who runs Burisma, Mykola Zlachevsky. So they're really in the granular details of this, this kickback scheme they're going to do. And I think it was because of this meeting they had. And right now, we can't really get to the bottom of it until the Secret Service tells us, yes, they were in Wilmington, or no, they weren't in Wilmington, and this is just a regular email that he sent from his house somewhere else. What happened was, the day after this uh, occurred was uh, Sunday, April 13th, 2014. Hunter and his brother go to Baltimore. They get a Secret Service accompaniment to Baltimore. So that's an official travel uh, log with the Secret Service. So there's there's documentation of where Hunter was before and after this this mystery day, but what was he, where was he then? And that opens up a whole can of worms, and it goes directly into this Robert Weiss, uh, the Robert Weiss investigation team. So there's a lot there. Huh? So they weren't at the basketball tournament on that day. We don't know. Um, it looks to me like they were. They uh-huh. want to be. These are the Bidens. And Maisie Biden was a really good basketball player, and Joe Biden loved bragging about her. And the basketball tournament was, you know, just six miles from his house. I right. think what happened was Hunter went off Secret Service protective detail, drove there, stayed at his dad's house, talked to his dad and his brother, and maybe some other people there, and then wrote this email that night, and then the next day left out with his brother, and they went to Baltimore, and then from Baltimore they went to Houston for a cancer treatment for his brother. So in the bigger picture, what what this says to you is that they were commiserating. They were talking. There were details. Now, ultimately, what happened with that information, do you think? Well, this is where I'll bring it right up into the present. So a month ago, the plea deal with Hunter Biden collapsed. There was a brave justice in uh delaware um judge norieka he said this this sticks you guys you know i'm not signing off on this you guys got to re restructure it and then she said anyone who has business in this case please get in touch with me now earlier in the spring i had i i sent evidence to this guy david weiss and the the u.s attorney in delaware Please have me uh, as a witness in front of a grand jury. Never heard back. So I sent a letter to the judge. I said, look, I talked to this guy, David Weiss. There was a crime that occurred in Wilmington on April 12th, 2014, I think. The, this is the evidence I have. This is the, what I'm just talking about, you know, a minute ago with this meeting in this basketball tournament. That's local jurisdiction. That's what that, that uh, grand jury should have looked at. I never heard back from the judge. I called her office about a week later. I got in touch with her clerk, and the clerk said, yes, we got your material. I said, thanks. I just wanted the judge to see it. And then, you know, that was it. I didn't know what else to do. The next day is when David Weiss got named as the special counsel, the very next day. So I don't know if what I did had any bearing on it, but I know that all of a sudden, everything changed. The Hunter Biden plea deal's out the window. There's this barrier guy up there, David Weiss. And, you know, there, there's an, there's this letter. So I'll be writing a substack about the letter and how this factors in. There's one more tidbit about this process that I sent to the judge. One of the lawyers who was on David Weiss's investigative team early on. So this investigation started in 2018. One of the lawyers was a guy named Alexander Mackler. On April 12th, 2014, the same day they had this basketball tournament, he sends an email, this guy, did, Alexander Mackler, sends an email to Hunter and um, another other guys, Devin Archer and other guys in that uh, um, Rosemont Seneca group about there's a, a Joe Biden operative named Ted Kaufman, who was then over in Ukraine, and he was working on election security. And so he did a video of this. And so this guy, Mackler, might have been at this meeting with Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and uh, Bo Biden, because he was helping Bo Biden at that time. He was like his campaign manager for his reelection to be the governor of, uh, they were, he was running to be the governor of Delaware in 2014. 
And Mackler then takes this knowledge that he had gathered and potentially gathered in 2014. He was certainly in the email chain and goes and is the he's the he's investigator. He's on the investigative team. He might have been the guy that was veering the investigation away from Joe. And that was a job early on. Now, he left after about a, a year or so. He wasn't in there most recently, but he may have, you know, told his told colleagues, don't go this way. Don't look at this. This needs to be heard. So I wrote all this to the judge. Never heard back. But now this guy, David Weiss, is the special counsel. I'm going to try and get to be a witness in front of his, his, his grand jury. Well, there's another there, there's another piece to this story. And anybody who wants to know what other shenanigans were going on around this time should listen to our previous episode with Mike McCormick and also, of course, get on his Substack, subscribe, Midnight in the Laptop of Good and Evil. But let's let's go back just for a minute and sort of explain that you've already gone to, you went to the FBI a long time ago. You went to the now special counsel, you went to the judge, and no one has picked up the information or done anything publicly with it that you're aware of. Um, and so you, your information is that while on a, tri a trip to Ukraine, you took notes. I mean, you're the guy taking the tra transcribing and as well as uh, taking down everything. And there was something that happened around that time that gives you reason why this is a crime. Just explain that if you will. Right. And, you know, also in the interim, we've had Devin Archer come in and testify. Right. So Devin Archer came in and corroborated some of the things that I said in our, that discussion we had. So April 12th, 2014, they have this planning meeting. April 16th, 2014, there's a meeting between Joe and Hunter and Devin Archer. And Devin Archer is now admitted to the Senate I mean, to the House uh, investigators, yes, Hunter was there. We didn't. We weren't sure. Now we're sure. Hunter was there. Oh, but we're just talking about an art project for my son. That's not what they were talking about. They were talking about. They were talking about Burisma kickback scheme, and they were talking about other things. You know, more kickback schemes that are under, with a company called Metabiota. Oh, so that that's, was, April that's an interesting one. Ooh. That's an interesting one. So April sixteenth. <laughs> That's April 16th. April 18th is when Hunter Biden joins Burisma. He starts getting millions of dollars from Burisma to do what? Get his dad into the game. They've already said, my, we can't raise expectations too high for my guy on this trip. So they're already planning what his dad is going to do. The thing that I witnessed was on April 21st on Air Force Two, when Jake Sullivan came walking to the back of the plane, and one of the press people asked him, what kind of energy assistance are you bringing to Ukraine? And he named four things. And two of them directly benefited Burisma significantly. And that's a kickback scheme. And that's what I told the FBI. That's what I sent to David Weiss. Never heard back from either of them. The judge knew about it. And now she's out of it. She's like, I don't think she has to have anything to do with those characters anymore. She said, I, she stood up to him. She said, this is ridiculous. We're not rubber stamping this. And now they've gone to... Back, kicked it back to the Biden Department of Justice, and we'll see what kind of mess they make out of that. Well, I mean, Weiss, the special counsel, 48% of Americans, this is another one of those, why did he do that questions? Those the political puzzlers we were talking about just a moment ago. And that is, why would he have done that and set this guy, the same guy who didn't get anything done in five years, except two misdemeanor counts and then a, a, a gun account that he couldn't avoid um, to send up to the DOJ? Why would they have that loser oversee this thing? Oh, because it's not an investigation, folks. It's it's what is it's an attempt to keep the House oversight, House Judiciary and another committee from looking at information so that they can say the DOJ can say, well, gee, wow, it's under investigation. Therefore, we cannot give you these government documents. We cannot give you the evidence we have. You can FOIA till your eyes turn red and we will not give that information to you because it's under investigation. It is nonsense. It is nonsense. These, this, it's a cover up. It's a cover up. It is. It is. And, you know, so the question I have is 
will I ever get to testify for this? So I'll go up and see. I'm going to, you know, keep knocking on doors and we'll see how what what is up. OK. Is there another way to look at this? For example, Devin Archer said, look, I mean, obviously we were we were in this conversation with the Ukrainians and others because we had access to Joe Biden and Joe Biden was our star and he was the guy we trot out in front of the customers or and 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 that's how we got to do business with these people but he's still at least in interviews I've heard um and you know looked at and that sort of thing I haven't gone through his whole transcript so you correct me if I'm wrong he never said that you know it was a kickback scheme but he just sort of wink wink nod nod well we were in business well what business were you selling we were trying to get together a uh you know financial uh thing a, a an instrument of some sort so we could make money on it and it was the only way where that was going to happen was Joe Biden that in and of itself is a crime isn't it yeah, that's public corruption and because Hunter was his, his family member. So he's benefiting his family. That's textbook de definition of public corruption, malfeasance in office. Yeah. Wow. So so where does it stand now? You're still waiting to hear. But have you uncovered anything more about this? Um, I'm, well, I'm going through the testimony. They're, they're going to have a lot more witnesses in. And the witnesses I've seen, I've written sub stacks on some of them. So there's a guy named Amos Hochstein they're going to get in and get under oath. You're talking and about the I, house? The house, yes, uh, the house oversight? oversight me. And I, I don't think they get to that until September. Personally, I think what they're doing is very slow, very slowly, but surely dragging Joe Biden in deeper and deeper into this. I get until it. But... America's looking at him going like, we can't vote for this guy as president again. And by then, it'll be too late for the Democrats to put up a reasonable alternative. So they're going to try to, you know, use this as the impeachment process that Donald Trump faced in 2019 that didn't work. So they, they have know. enough information right now to impeach Joe Biden right this moment. I don't but know there, what there's. There's a lot to it. And they I, I think they're doing the right thing because there are so many tentacles involved. I mean, Barack Obama is involved in this. Yes. You know, I, I told you about the sure. April 16th meeting with Hunter and Devin and Joe in the West Wing. That night, Joe Biden had a long, uh, solitary limousine ride with uh, Barack Obama in Western Pennsylvania. They put a picture out of the selfie of the two of them in the back limousine. Well, you know, what did they talk about? What's Joe going to do in Ukraine? You know, there's there was a lot of red flags about his his finances coming through the White House. A lot of different things. So, you know, Barack Obama's in this. There are so many Obama Biden Democrats operatives that are also in this. And I think they're going to try to wrap the whole group up in a big conspiracy because the conspiracy, that's, that was the charge that I put in the complaint to the FBI. There's a conspiracy between Jake Sullivan and Joe Biden to cover up his malfeasance. That conspiracy is ongoing today. So there's no statute of limitations to worry about with that. You know, they were trying to slow walking this investigation to have the statute of limitations run out. That's what the IRS whistleblowers were complaining about. Right. And I think the and about the Hunter Biden stuff. And when you allege a conspiracy, it starts the clock all, all over again, I believe. That's what that's what happens. So, OK, so uh, Jake Sullivan, um, he, he was national security advisor uh, for Barack. No, he is the current national security advisor. He was also a key guy for Hillary Clinton, worked with her over at state. Uh, and now we've got Anthony Blinken. He was the uh, go-to guy and uh, national security advisor for Joe Biden. He was also in the Obama administration, clearly, because he was working with Joe Biden, but he was a go-to guy. And then now he's the secretary of state. I mean, they're the same people, rinse, repeat, and it's just failure upon failure upon failure or is it a failure see are these failures or are these planned planned events of chaos you, you know that's a great question and i think that's really important to get to the heart of um and as someone who traveled with joe biden i traveled with tony blinken i think those guys uh, joe biden had an had a horrifically high opinion of himself huge ego. He had a towering ambition to be president and would do anything possible to be the president. And all the people around him were in on it. And now look where they are. And they're still the same people. Tony Blake is the Secretary of State. And uh, Ron Klain was his um, 
chief of staff not too long. So these guys are all the guys that were around him, and they pushed Joe Biden into the White House and it, at all costs. And we're the ones that are paying the costs. You know, the the liberty of America is paying the costs. I don't think it was pre-planned. I think it was chaotic. I think Joe Biden was just sort of able to take advantage of a series of events that occurred. He had so much experience in the in uh, Washington that he knew all the levers to pull to put himself in the best light. And then he just kept pulling that in until look where he is. He's in the White House and things are it's a disaster. It's an absolute disaster. Uh, well, it still doesn't make any sense. I mean, you think that there are smart people, adults in the room, so to speak, and there are not individuals who think, well, you know, does this look good? Is this okay for the country? For example, let's go, if you don't mind, sort of hopping over to the cartel issue. And the question, of course, is why do they let all these people come across? Why aren't we doing anything about the fentanyl? What, what's going on? And you've been thinking quite a bit about this and sort of revisiting a basically, I guess, a secret trip that you made with Joe Biden during his uh, White House years in the as the vice president and discussing whatever it was at a with the Honduran president uh, and vice president and landing at a what is tantamount? It's got to be a CIA airbase uh, working with USAID. That's CIA. Um, w- what the hell? Yeah, what the hell? I mean, it's it's shocking. And what's really shocking is that nobody put the put the uh, connected the dots. And you know, I finally looked looked at all the dots and said, "This is evil. This is really evil. This is Joe Biden selling our country out to the cartels." I don't know what he got in return from them, but I know what they are benefiting from right now. So I'll I'll run through the story briefly. Um, basically, the U.S propped up uh, cocaine cartel smuggling politicians in Honduras starting in 2009. They did it in 2014 and they did it in 2017 through elections. Basically, they did in Honduras what they're doing in what they've done in Ukraine um, and kind of actually what they're doing here in America. They took over, they faked the elections, and then they sent their guys in and took over and did criminal activities through the government. So exploited the weaknesses. Yeah. And they and they push it through. And I mean, it's almost like, a, you know, it's their drawing board for the uh, recipe for the 2020 election steal is Honduras and then Ukraine. So in 2009, they put a guy in named Sosa Loba, Pepe, uh, President Sosa Loba. His son at the time was smuggling cartel level tons of cocaine in America. They looked the other way. The U.S. looked the other way. Joe Biden goes down and does a special sort of secret trip. It was announced that he was going to Honduras, but at the very last minute, he comes to the, they diverted the landing to a U.S. airbase down there called Soto Cano Air Base. It's one of the few air bases in the in the U.S. air bases in the world where they don't fly the American flag; they fly two flags, Honduran and U.S. And now that air base is an international airport. It like split it. It's like part air base, part international airport. So. It's this chummy relationship with the Hondurans, who are drug smugglers. They were drug smugglers during the entire time of the Obama-Biden administration. So he flies into this uh, this base. At the last minute, the military aide comes walking back. He goes, oh, I made a terrible miscalculation. I, I thought I'd uh, set the landing for, we could land in the airport we originally intentioned to in their capital city in dry weather, but it rained. It's wet weather. We can't go there. We got to divert to this Soto Canyon Air Base. It's an hour and a half trip into uh, the meetings that we're going to have at the Capitol City and the Presidential Palace. Okay, fine. Well, the Vice President of, of Honduras was waiting right there at the door when he got off, and no one talked about it. She knew, and there was there was no press on the plane. I was th- that was there because as a stenographer. They had um, some TV interviews set up for Joe at the next stop. So they wanted me there. So I'm just there like, okay, I'll be here. No press is on the plate. So there's no reporting. Hey, at the last minute, Vice President diverted to the Soto Cato and did a trip in. Nobody knew about this until I wrote about it in my Substack about a month ago. I started this. Um, so we go in there. He does these meetings. About a month after this, they 
initiate this thing called Operation Anvil out of this Sotocano Air Base in Honduras. It's a tragedy. U.S. military assets, State Department helicopters um, are used in conjunction with the Honduran National Police, who at the time were very corrupt, to basically go into the into the jungles and arrest cocaine smugglers and retrieve their cocaine. They're they're pulling it, this cocaine out of the jungles, out of these cocaine smugglers, into the hands of the president's son. <laughs> I mean, they, you know, I mean that's what he was doing. And he Where was the, the cocaine, cocaine dealer, <laughs> right? I mean, basically, he was just. Are saying, you suggesting that that's the sole uh, place where he got his cocaine? He was selling the the ill gotten gains. I don't know. There's never been any in- investigation into it. There was an investigation. So what happened was there was a terrible tragedy. They shot up a bunch of innocent people that were out in the middle of the night fishing in a canoe. They all got killed. Machine guns shooting down on their canoe from helicopters. Four people got killed. Two kids, two pregnant women got killed. The locals in the area went ballistic, burned down all the Honduran government buildings in the area. It's like the Mosquito Coast. It's like very primitive there. You know, there's not a lot of government interaction. So they went crazy. The U.S. international headlines, the U.S. does a quote unquote investigation. It's just a cover up. And who became the head of Southern Command for the Department of Defense at that time? John Kelly, General, Four Star General, Marine General John Kelly. John Kelly would later be Donald Trump's Secretary of Homeland Security and his chief of staff. So this smuggling program goes on because of this Operation Anvil mess. They bring in a DEA investigation. They're like, okay. And in the Senate, this gets back into DC. There's 21 uh, Democratic senators who write a letter to the Biden, Obama Biden administration saying, you got to get, you got to fix the mess in Honduras. There are, um, you know, human rights violations all over the place. Fix it. So they know that there's pressure on them from the world at large. They can't just go down there and do their secret op. So they bring in Kelly and they get a new, they start this DEA investigation and they get a new president. This guy's name is uh, Juan Orlando Hernandez. He's even worse. His brother at the time is smuggling tons of cocaine into America. In 2014, in February, a month after this guy is installed as the president through a kind of a U.S. installation process, the DEA records his brother talking at a Denny's in uh, the capital city about all the deals he's going to do with this uh, these cartel people. And it's going to go, they're going to have government support because his brother's now the president. They knew, Joe Biden knew at that time they were smuggling drugs. They were, and the U.S. was going to look the other way. They knew it. Tons of cocaine is coming in. What happens in 2014 in the summer? Wow. That's the first wave of um, minors. Uh, un- yes, the DACA uh, kids. The DACA kids. They all show up at the Swarm border. Swarm in the border. From Honduras. And they had to, that's where they made the kids in cages. That's where yes. that. So that's 2014. So Kelly's in charge of the Southern Command there. And he's very close with this guy, Hernandez. Hernandez <laughs> is close with Joe. And what do they do? What's the solution? Joe comes up with a solution. We'll send $500 million to Honduras to help them right this terrible uh, human rights conditions in their country. Oh, so he geez. sent $500 million of American taxpayer money to people he knew were smuggling cocaine into America by the ton over four, over three years. So it was 2014, 2015, 2016 in a program called the Alliance for Prosperity. There's two other countries that were involved. Ah, it was prosperous for somebody. Yeah. Of Guatemala <laughs> and El Salvador. So we sent all this money down there. $1.5 billion goes down there. And the, and the Congress signed off on it. You know, the uh, Mitch McConnell and um, Paul Ryan Congress signed off. Right? Exactly. Um, That's my Mitch McConnell. Yeah. So I can also do another Mitch McConnell where he just stands there and he can't say anything, which is awful of me to say that, but whatever. Anyway, keep going. I'm sorry. So keep um, going, Mike. (laughs) We move on. Joe, so then what happens? Donald Trump gets elected in 2016. Everybody's mind gets blown. Oh my God, he's not supposed to do that. And the the winter of his election 
uh, was also when the Honduras president, this Orlando Hernandez guy, hey, he he got reelected with really shady election process. Like all of a sudden he didn't have enough votes and they delayed the vote counting and then all the votes showed up, just like what happened in 2020 and here in America with Joe Biden. And so this guy gets back in and uh, the new administration of um, uh, President Trump's with his Homeland Security guy is Kelly. Kelly's been close with this guy, Hernandez. They say, oh, yeah, we recognize these guys. They're a good they're going to be a good partner in stopping immigration problems while they were smuggling cocaine. Still, they're still smuggling cocaine. Trump comes in. He's like, wait a minute. What you know, what's going on? I don't like these guys. We're going to cut off their aid unless they stop illegal immigration. So he cut the aid off and they stopped Ill illegal immigration. They changed some of the laws around this guy. While he was smuggling cocaine in, it, he changed the law so that people can, they 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 stopped the, the illegal immigration at the border during the Trump years. Well, but during the 2018 midterms, a bunch of these migrant caravans come out of Honduras and that's what the Democrats use to make Trump look bad. Oh, he's a human rights guy. He's a racist. He's tearing right. up families at the border. Cage we, you, yeah, you know, <laughs> kids in cages. So they get they they win back the house. A month after they win back the house, Kelly's gone. He's no longer the chief of staff, and Trump moves on and arrests the brother who's been smuggling all this cocaine, who's been on tape. The DA culminates their investigation and trump arrests a guy he's the first american president who would arrest the drug smugglers <laughs> and the guy goes to trial in 2019 he's found guilty in october 2019 two months later what happens covid hits and the whole place shuts down you know so there's a lot of things that fall into place there after covid shuts down joe biden comes in and what does joe biden do right out of the gate he opens the border and the cartels come rolling in and they're rolling, they're rolling human trafficking and drug trafficking across the border at levels never seen before. And one of our previous guests said that the, I think it was that the human trafficking is actually bringing in more to the cartels now than is the cart the cocaine. Yeah, I believe it. And you know, it's, we paid, we paid them to do that to us. We're paying, we paid yeah. them 2016. Paying for the privilege of killing our citizens. Right. It's just, you know, there's no way that I think, you know, what I've seen over the course of looking into this Hunter Biden laptop and being with Joe Biden is there's three stages with Joe Biden. There's a stage where he's corrupt, and that's the Burisma stuff. He's just played corrupt. This whole cartel thing is criminally evil. This is criminally evil. But then he takes it up one step further and goes massively evil. We can talk about that some other time because- that's a long yeah. story. That goes I, into China, and that's the Wuhan stuff. Yeah, that's that's just insane. Well, Metabiota, too, maybe. Yeah. Um, I mean, why would they do that? Exactly. It's beyond comprehension. They're, they lust for power. They want to be right. Trump came in, and they just couldn't stomach the fact that this guy who wasn't a politician was better than that, better at it than they were. I mean- he got immigration. Well, were they even trying to be better? I mean, I don't think they were. I think they were just, you know, working with bad guys for an unknown reason that we right. cannot tell. Throwing money into cartel drug smugglers is their method of fixing immigration. Whereas Trump said, no, we're not going to throw money in it. We're going to make them do this, this, and this. Yeah. You know, they set up this uh, process where if people were fleeing from Honduras because of, say, a violence in their hometown or something, and they felt Going back in Honduras would be a, a danger to them. They were able to go back into either Guatemala or El Salvador, a second, second country, or in uh, Mexico. But they were turned away from the border, and they had to wait in these countries for their turn to get their yes. chance to plead their case to the immigration uh, court. Well, Joe Biden's done away with all that. It's just mm. roll them in and let them roam around the country. And, you know, he's paying people to do that. He's... They're getting paid to do, come in here. It's yeah. insane. And it's we're paying all kinds of NGOs to give the big old lay at the border. And the Border right. Patrol are going, what are we doing here? Yeah. <laughs> and, it's you know, just... it's really supporting the NGOs. And 
I mean, it's just, it's beyond comprehension why Joe Biden is our president and doing the stakes to our country, but that's what they're doing. I, I just have one last question because I know you got to scoot. And that's, you know, I had a frisson of an opinion or just sort of like reading something, maybe it was your Substack. And I thought it, it wouldn't surprise me to have Joe Biden sort of cop when, when all is said and done, when he gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar uh, by everyone that, oh, they were doing it for intelligence reasons that, uh, you know, his son was working as an intelligence operative or a uh, something like that or a CHS or something. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah. I've always thought that was going to be the, the last resort cover story. But, you know, that's what's going on with this House investigation is they're pulling out the bank records. So it's not intelligence. It's greed. It's going into the banks. It's money going into them. You know, one of the things about um, this the secretive trip to this air base is, so the vice president of Honduras shows up there. If she has a parcel with her or a suitcase filled with something, Joe Biden takes, she hands it to Joe Biden. He hands it to his staff. They put her in Air Force Two. It goes all the way home to his residence in Naval Observatory without anyone looking at it except him. Mm -hmm. Because Like a diplomatic every, pouch. It's a diplomatic pouch. Every American government plane is a diplomatic pouch. They land it at Andrews and they just walk off the airplane and go into their private lives. No one looks at, through their stuff. So- you know, I don't know what Joe got off that plane or potentially could have, but that that potential has to be understood. That may have been what he was interested in initially, and then it grew into this association with the cartels. He wanted to make himself look good in the Hispanic community. That's not really happening now with this southern border mess. Hispanics are up in arms. Conservative Hispanics are, you know, absolutely. They're like, this is insane for our country. We we want this stopped. Quid pro Joe strikes again, maybe. That's right. Wow, that's unbelievable. That's where you think it's going. You're the guy looking at the the information, and we appreciate that you do, Mike McCormick. Yeah. We do. The laptop is called, or the substack is called, The Midnight in the Laptop of Good and Evil. And you can find that on Substack. Please make sure you subscribe. And we appreciate your time again today. You're welcome, Victoria. It's great to be on with you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Adult in the Room podcast. To keep the programs you like to listen to, please rate this podcast with a fantastic five stars on your Apple podcast app every time you listen. And give me a great review. Plus, of course, subscribe to the podcast. It makes a difference with the big tech algorithm and the big tech oligarchs, and it makes us easier to find. Please get in touch with me on all the big tech stuff. Yeah, we're still there. Using the names Victoria Taft or the Adult in the Room podcast on MeWe, Parlor, Minds, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks to 1A Cast for imaging, editing, and production. The fantastic song is Gospel by the March 4th Band of Portland, Oregon. Music for Antifa versus Mike Strickland is Ride or Die by Raps by RC. The Adult in the Room podcast is also a production of Flamingo Road Studios. Remember, head up, heart out, and strive to be the adult in the room. Till next time, mischief managed. <laughs>